Last Call Media, and I'm a lead account strategist and head of employee experience. I also run a community space in the area called Ten Forward. Um, it's like an arts venue, uh, and I travel around doing stuff for comedy. And unfortunately, I am also a DJ, but you can. <laughs> Uh, forget that if you want to take me seriously, it's okay to just pretend I'm not also a DJ. Um, I've been thinking about this topic a lot. How do I use the large language models that we have at our disposal to better my life in all the ways, not just professionally? And I've been doing a lot of playing around. I want to share what I found. This is true. <laughs> People are legitimately freaking out about it, especially in like a lot of the spheres I'm in because I, obviously everyone here is in tech in some way, um, but believe it or not, a lot of my friends who aren't, they're like really scared about it, and um, I'm like, I think there's a lot of potential to use it and leverage it for good, and they're like, what about deep fakes? And I'm like, well, let's... <laughs> Let's wait till legislation catches up with that, because I think that won't last very long. Um, and I'm I'm trying to find ways for anyone to make their life easier. Obviously, the professional level, I think there's some good tools out there for how to leverage that. But what about in your, our personal lives? Can it improve my friendships is one of the things I've been thinking about. Um, can it save me money on therapy? It gets really expensive. So what if I had to pay less dollars? What about my marriage? Can it help me with that? That was another question I asked. Um, <laughs> so, somewhat joking, but really this is how we got here. Um, it's kind of psychotic to think, hey, do you want to uh, stop going to therapy and talk to an AI instead? Um, theoretically, psychotic. In practice, also psychotic. But it's not unreasonable. Um, my biggest bottom line question, how can I use large-scale language models? Specifically, like Gemini and ChatGPT to improve my very human life in all the areas, but in like an ethical way. If you missed it, I'm asking psychotic questions like, do I have to stop going to therapy and can I just use AI instead? Okay. <laughs> now we're all on the same page. Um, I'd ask that one. Have you asked that? All right, well, we're going to answer it today. The answer is you still need both. Okay. Um, <laughs> can AI, specifically large language models, make me a better human? Uh, we're going to look at large language models really quickly, very quickly. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert in how they are, but I felt like it was really important for me to understand what's happening at a base level. Um, well, I'll talk to you about my process for how I've been using it. Um, I'll fall into a couple rabbit holes with you all, um, and then we'll do some questions and some idea shares. Um, so what even are they? Uh, here are the two I'm going to talk about today. Google, which was Bard, they just went through a rebrand, so don't call it Bard, that's its dead name. Um, ChatGPT, <laughs> that's the one everyone knows. These two, um, and then I asked Google's Gemini, what are the other ones? And then it said, I can't disclose a specific list of other <laughs> miles, dudes and practice. And so that's very suspicious to me. Um, <laughs> that would be like if you went to Aldi and you're like, where are the other grocery stores? And they're like, I'm not legally allowed to tell you <laughs> where the other grocery stores are. <laughs> Have you tried? <sighs> Our granola bars. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is basically what they're up to. They're trained on text. They put in a bunch of stuff from all over the place, and then it learns... Um, the statistical patterns and relationships between those words and phrases. Um, when they're saying training, they're talking about trying to predict what the next word in the sequence is, and then they just do that like over and over again, like a bajillion times, um, and then they compare the word that it, they predicted to like what well, the real sensical word would have been, and then just from there, um, it's this in this very very layperson's terms. This is what we're dealing with. Um, and then I obviously was talking to my bestie, Gemini. Uh, what, I was like, Gemini, what are you up to these days? And Gemini was like, um, through millions of predictions and adjustments, I'm going to learn how to identify my patterns and predict the word most likely to come next. It did say hence, which I was like, I don't think my friends talk like that, but we'll get there. Um, generate human-like text. Like, what human? Where are we? 
Great expectations? Okay. You guys like Charles Dickens? Just me. All right. Um, largely, so here's, like, kind of the key differences is in how they're, like, co I guess code, yeah, it's kind of chip stuff happening. Um, generative, uh, pre-trained transformer stuff. So the transformer, the big difference with a transformer versus, like, the recurrent neural network is that the transformer can look at words even very far apart, like, with, like, further down in the paragraph, and it's, like, also analyzing the relationships between those two words. Um, and they do call it paying attention, which is like, just like my therapist for real. Um, uh, to all, they pay attention to all the words in the sentence, and then they assign levels of importance to each word. And so for a transformer type, it's going to have a better grasp of context. Gemini is doing something a little bit different. It's got a combination thing going on. Um, we'll talk about that in one second, but basically, with the um, recurrent neural network, there's another type of neural network. It's concurrent. It's one of it's a, a C, um, and they. This is more about like one word at a time, um, and then this like palm two thing, which I didn't look. I don't know too much about, but it is like a combination of the two. So Gemini is using a combination of the two. The idea is that um, Gemini's or palm two is like. Uh, this part may demonstrate better performance in tasks requiring factual accuracy and knowledge-based reasoning. So it's it's trying to do like facts, um, and whereas ChatGPT is is strength is supposedly in being more creative. Um, it has better concept of context. Um, so really, the majority of this uh, I I started basing. I was using Google. What was then Google Bard and um, I, I kind of went into ChatGPT a little bit just to see if how different they were. And in all reality, it's not that different for like what you're, what's being generated out of these. Um, but there's like some nuances. You can kind of see how ChatGPT's use of language flows a little bit differently. I found Bard to be a little more like, like to the point is a weird way to say it. But yeah, it's like. It's like, you know, it's like if you have two uncles and they both tell the same story. It's the same story, but it's going to have a little... Now they're my uncles. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Um, big other difference, it, there is a free version of ChatGPT, but for, like, the unlimited stuff, it's 20 a month, and Google Gemini um, is free. So, obviously, um, I'm going to use the free one for the majority of these. Um, how do you use them to make your life better? Well, this is, this is the how. The framework itself, I'm trying to leverage the capabilities of these language models to like actively learn and reflect on myself. Um, the goal for me was promoting personal growth and development. Um, I don't think anything will ever replace human connection and community at a bit. Like it's just, I don't think that it'll ever be possible. I know we're freaked out about AI taking our jobs. I just think. We'll, we'll be like, oh, we need these totally different jobs we never anticipated needing as a result of these tools. Um, we talked yesterday about AI and the hiring process. Like, I can see a world where there's like a whole different bunch of jobs that come out because of the way we're using AI and hiring, which ultimately it's doing a lot of stuff we don't want to do anyway. It's like boring stuff. Um, so then adding humans in. Um, I know for me personally, the way I found the most, like, contentedness and like happiness satisfaction with my life has to do with the amount of community I'm around like my literal interpersonal human to human connections um and so I'm like can these tools help that be better and easier um I don't know about you guys but it's like very gig economy these days so like I have 19 to 47 jobs at any given moment um so I'm like can it like help with some of this some of this cognitive load stuff um all right so first step is kind of doing a pain point analysis, a human retro, if you will. Basically, made a list of stuff that was stressing me out. That's what I did. Made a list of stuff that was stressing me out. Um, and then I was like, hey, like, how do I ask these things for help? And I, so I did, a, I'll dive a little bit into prompt development, and, and that stuff is huge. Um, and then upon uh, inserting a prompt, like, how am I assessing what it's putting out? And then um, clarifying as needed. Follow-up prompts were essential in this process. And I'll talk to you all about how I'm implementing this stuff uh, 
that I find into like my real life and practices and the ways I'm continuing to iterate and improve on it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I, I'm taking with me and there's a lot of stuff that's like, oh, that's garbage. Um, so maybe you'll find some, some things throughout the this part if you have questions and stuff. Um, we can, I think we can take them pretty much real time, but I don't know about you. I hate when a presenter's like, oh, any questions? And then you ask a question and they're like, I'll get to that later. It's like, <laughs> well, why, why did you ask me if I had a question? Um, so <laughs> maybe, maybe I promise we'll save some time for questions. Um, all right. So first thing is like, what are you stressed about? You actually can have these things tell you what's stressful. And it's pretty accurate. Um, I was like, hey, can you list um, things that might stress me out? And then it generated this whole big thing. And in the big thing were things I don't want to talk about here in front of you all. And some of the subcategories were daily pressures, social situations, and life events. And I was like, all right, tell me more about those three. Because um, I don't really want to talk to you about my health issues. Um, so I like, broke down some like daily pressures, some social situations, and then some life events. And within each of these, there's opportunities for me to be like, can I get organized and proactive around um, these day-to-day -day stressors? You know, are there things that I can be thinking about and talking to my loved ones about in advance? Um, so yeah, it's, it's just interesting to have it generate a list like this and like kind of do some self-reflecting. Um, and then I fell into a tiny little rabbit hole. So here's our first rabbit hole. Yay. Um, I was like, hey, how did you know how many things to list when I said as many as possible? I was like, can you list as many as possible? And then I was trying to figure out what limiting factors it has that, like, lets it know it might be too much information. And I was, in it was interesting that it, it did, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it did, the thing that I was hoping it would, which is uh, for anxiety triggers, listening too many could be overwhelming. <laughs> which is like, well, I was curious, like, is that part of why it didn't, because I was like, can you list as many as possible? It's like, this thing knows a lot. It's got a bajillion of parameters. That it's, you know, it's like, it could probably keep going forever. Um, and so how to decide what to listen and what not to. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Context, readability, relevance, pen spark, that's an error. Um, and there's a, uh, and then it says here, there's no set limit on number of items I can list, but I use a combination of those factors to determine the best length. Um, and then we'll get into this a little more in a second, but just like on t in terms of prompt, uh, it's super important to continue to tweak your prompts if you are like, this isn't as helpful as I need it to be. Um, there are ways to make it more helpful. Um, yeah, and then it's saying um, it's kind of providing limited set examples anyway. Um, it, like, it always kind of has these like paragraphs at the end. He's like, ultimately, I wanted to provide you with information. It's like, I don't ever read this last one. It's kind of like, I used to be an English teacher and like, you know, like the in conclusion part. I never read that part either. No offense, students. Um, if you're listening to this, love you. Uh, but <laughs> the conclusion paragraphs are horrible. Okay, but <laughs> speaking of conclusion paragraphs being horrible, uh, okay, uh, I actually found it really interesting that um, it's able to tell me what else I can do, like, in asking it any kind of metacognitive, if you will, meta-metacognitive question, um, it's able to tell me, like, what I can do um, to meet its needs and meet my own needs. And so I was like, okay, well, first of all, they're so much better at understanding themselves and asking for what they need than most humans are. Um, and so then, and that, and I started thinking about how nonviolent communication has helped me be a better human, and, like, these language models are crushing it. So can I learn from them? And kind of, yes. Um, nonviolent communication, I think a lot of people hear this and they think, like, don't use words like, t you know, violent-sounding words, but it's actually a super sick framework. Um, and so I'll talk about the framework for just a second, because this is like, if you want to be a better human regardless, you should just like know this one in your back pocket. It's when you're like doing any communicating whatsoever, but specifically in moments of content, conflict, uh, you know, starting with your observation, connecting it to an actual emotion, which is like gnarly. You got to really practice that one. Um, and then identifying the underlying need. Um, the example is the best way to talk about it. I see the dishes haven't been done yet. I feel frustrated because I really need those dishes done. 
Uh, I have a need for cleanliness and shared responsibility. And then always ending with a request. Would you be willing to wash some dishes after dinner tonight? Um, this framework can be scaled in every direction and used in any context. Um, it's worked professionally so well. Uh, I definitely recommend, if you haven't read the Nonviolent Communication, I think it's uh, Rosenthal, Ro Rosenberg. Um, it's got some really cool stuff for giving feedback. Uh, and yeah. And then, so I asked this question, to what extent do you, as a large language model, just in case it forgot, uh, feel like you practice nonviolent communication in your responses? Is it intentional? You are very good at asking for what you need. So just kind of try and butter it up. Just, you know, make sure it's still on my side. Um, and its answer was really interesting. It was like, yeah, um, here's, here's what I know the points of um, nonviolent communication to be. And so here are the ways I meet it. I strive to base my responses on the factual information you provide in your questions. So true about you, bro. Um, clarity, I use clear and concise language to avoid misunderstandings. Yeah, you do. Respect, I mean, ter personally never felt disrespected. Treating you with respect by avoiding judgmental or dismissive language. And then trying to identify the underlying purpose of your question and tell my response. Right, like, this structure is pretty much what it's doing whenever I'm putting in a prompt, which is what nonviolent communication is. So then that got me into a whole other rabbit hole where I was like, is communicating with this thing? Because everyone wants to talk about how these things are going to negatively impact our youth and like, oh, no, no. But I'm like, if like this is what you're communicating with and how language is being modeled for you, like in just what I know about mirror neurons, like could this not be super beneficial to younger people to see and to read and to ingest because everything speaks and everything we're putting into ourselves like has a, a long-term impact on the way we think so i can't watch certain shows or listen to certain music anymore um like i grew up in springfield and like a lot of music i listened to was like you know not like questionable and as soon as i started listening to like different music i was like oh i'm making different choices already um so kind of then i was going to like further the rabbit hole a little bit and i was like all right homie gemini uh, do you think that reading responses like yours are going to improve the way humans speak with each other and make us more compassionate and empathetic? Like, mirror neurons, question mark? This is where we got real interesting. Um, there's actually an ongoing debate about the role of, of mirror neurons, which, if you're an educator, you should know. Um, and I kind of fell down into some studies. We don't have to go there too hard, but basically... There are other theories that this might support about, like, just considering the future of these language models, like, what, how can it help c us continue to improve ourselves? Um, um, and I want to keep learning about these um, and how it applies to growing and changing. I uh, kind of got another, I was kind of like other theories that might foster positive human development that are explaining why speaking to this thing seems to be helping me be a better human. The one that stood out the most is this cognitive load theory. Um, and so according to Gemini, like, you know, we can manage some of the cognitive load of pro like processing is like freeing me up to be a better person, which is like one of the points I've been making to my friends who are anti using AI. I'm like, yeah, but like when I can just put this Slack message through Gemini and be like, can you make this warmer? And like, or if I can just put this like LinkedIn post and be like, can you write this for me? It's freeing me up to like be a better partner. It's like freeing me up to be a better sibling or, or spouse. And um, so this, I really am interested in pursuing this um, cognitive load theory and what the impact might be. Um, hello? Bro, I don't know why I forgot. Um, so bada bing bada boom, this is the one that really stood out to me. Um, and I kind of want to, I'll explore this more later, but chunking information, the way that it organizes information for us, I find very useful and is help actively helping me better my life. Um, the way that's super personalized and immediate, um, and then the interactive pieces. Uh, and I remember like as a teacher, one of the hardest things is like knowing what questions to ask to solicit um, and check for understanding from your students. Like it's, you know, 
they could be fully paying attention and even have a deep comprehension for the text and be thinking critically about it. But if as an instructor, I don't know how to ask the question that's going to give me that information that like they've mastered the content. Um, it's su you know, it's super tricky because it's like now I'm like grading this kid on mastery of a text. I didn't even ask a good question that's like aligned with the, with what's going on. Um, so it's it's in a in a sense like it's really uh, interesting. It has interesting implications for educators and for parenting. Um, yeah, and then some stuff. I was like, I'm gonna like look into this more later, probably for a different talk, maybe next year. You know. Just putting that out there. Maybe next year I'll do that. Um, but um, then I was like, that's pretty ironic that um, doing this thing to like free up some like my cognitive load um, is just continuing to add to things that I want to look into later. Um, so that that's just you know one piece of the. You guys, does this happen to you? Uh, he's, like, he's like, look at so he's like, yeah, I, I just want to research this for the rest of the life. That's not even the point of why I submitted this talk. Um, okay, but essentially, just to go back a little bit, I think that looking into like how these tools can be used to foster positive human development, you know, if mirror neurons are are not a, a factor here, but continuing to like read this like structured and organized information that's like very clear and concise, has needs and requests, is directly giving you feedback about how to better meet those needs, you know, has that made me a better communicator at home and in my family? I'd like to think like it already has, um, just in just in doing this work. It's really interesting to me. Um, cool. uh, just uh, Lynn, before you sit down, I just want to make sure that you see um, my really good use of GIFs. Okay. <laughs> so. I uh, I wrote AI didn't tell me to put these. Words. <laughs> this is original work. Um, really important part of this process for me was learning how to write the prompts. Um, some best practices: uh, task, task, context, exemplar, persona, format, tone, in this order. Now let's talk about what that means. Um, and in my experience, you really don't need all six to write a good prompt. In fact, like some of the things I, I you saw before, I don't capitalize anything. They really recommend using very plain text in writing these things. I'm kind of I've misspelled every other word, and it's kind of it can figure it out for you. So that's it's pretty good. It's kind of like actually reminds me of I don't know if everyone has kids, but like when they like write like um a description of their picture and it's missing ninety percent of the letters, but you're like oh yeah. <laughs> Good job. You know, like the AI is like doing that with me. Um, so the first things first, um, your task. Um, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to analyze, write, create, generate? And a fun thing to do is you can even ask, hey, what are some tasks you can do? And then it kind of opens up the possibilities. Like, oh, I didn't think that I could like put this information in and it would analyze and organize it for me. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, Context, this was probably the biggest learning curve that I had throughout this process was how much context is enough and like even just the, the idea of adding context change like it was like blew that thing wide open. Um, so user background, <clears throat> what does success look like? What is the environment in which you're asking this question? I didn't notice it's like surprisingly really good at shaping uh, the answer to your need. Um, this part, the exemplar part, crazy, um, giving a format or structure, so being like, I actually want you to write this, I'm, here is a text message I got, uh, from my partner, and I, you know, I want to respond with this message using the nonviolent communication framework, and it's like, blows the game wide open. Um, now, the persona piece, you have so much fun with because you can be like, rewrite that as a pirate. And it's like, ahoy, maybe. S sorry, I didn't do the dishes. Um, you know, so <laughs> that's very fun. Uh, every time I put something in, I like, I like just have like a tiny bit of fun with myself. I like change who it might be from just to see. 
Um, so it's like, hey, can you write an email response to, and then I like insert the email, but I'm like, but like this time do it as Dua Lipa. Um, and then, or more realistically, it's probably Grimes. I don't uh, know what Dua Lipa stands on any eyes. Uh, surprising number of celebrities are weighing in, and Will I Am is one of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, and then giving a format, um, <clears throat> I found this really interesting that you could have it output in table format. And you can say with column headers, and you can say with H2 headings. You can do all that. Um, that's really cool. Um, you can even name the headers. You can tell it how you want it to organize the information. Um, love that. And then tone. Uh, a lot of these are the three I use the most make it more professional, make it more casual, make it more friendly. Um, I also ask it all the time can you just make this clearer? Uh, I have like, like, internal like informalities and you know, um, so I'm like, can I just, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's an example I used today. Um, I want to tell my best brother I love him and appreciate them, but I don't want to sound cringy. So like, what tone do you suggest I ask you to use in crafting my response? I can give it the context and then ask it what tone it thinks I should use and what possibilities there are, and then use that to craft the actual prompt. Um, it's, there's layers here, Heidi, so just hang in there with me. Because, okay. Um, so I, I did uh, put this in, um, and then, oh wait, uh, there's, there is, there is, I will show you the answer to this question in a minute, but the slides are out of order, so it, it's just me, just me being a regular schmegler old human out here, you guys. <laughs> Um, okay, so persona examples I thought was really interesting of like different personas. Um, I asked it like, hey, can you write me a LinkedIn post about going to Nerd Summit as though I were the head of marketing? And then I asked it, how would that be different from what you'd write if I asked you to write a LinkedIn post about going to Nerd Summit as though I were a DJ and a stand-up comedian? And again, if, if me being a DJ is distracting to you, uh, taking me seriously, just just erase that. Thanks. Cool. Just erase that right from you. Okay. Um... Where's the, here. So, uh, I love this little customer service line it has in the bottom. Just let me know which persona in the content you want to convey and I'll craft a response that fits their voice and style. I'm like, wow, you're excited about that. Um, <laughs> it's a funny out the example. Just wrapped up an inspiring note summit, fascinated by speaker talk on topic. Their approach to marketing strategy is a game changer. Excited to implement these insights and elevate our brand start selling hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. And then it's like, now I'm a DJ. Yo. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, do you want to do the rest? Still buzzing from the, am I thinking? Yes. Still buzzing from the electric energy at Nerd Summit. Between, <laughs> between dropping beats and cracking jokes, I learned a ton about the future of creativity. Huge shout out to the air, air horn, uh, to the amazing artists and comedians who brought the house down. Can't wait to turn these inspirations into hilarious sets and fire mixing. Um, so it also gave me some other personas that it can adapt to. So I think that's really interesting, especially in the gig economy. You probably all have like nine different things to do. And um, again, like the biggest thing here for me is the lightning of the cognitive load. Um, I'm already thinking about these. I'm already aware I need to post this on my LinkedIn. It's already stressing me out. How? What can I do with the free, the currently free tool, to make it um, to make it work? Um, okay. And then format examples, just so you know, you can ask it what format examples do you have, and it'll tell you. Um, one of my favorites is um, song. <laughs> we'll write you a song. Um, comparison table. The links and sources recently. Uh, it's starting to tell me that it can't, for like legal and privacy reasons, it can't give me links anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but then it does still give me links. So there's something there to be explored. Um, and don't worry, it can tell you an informative story. So that's in a relatable and engaging way. So that's good. Um, okay. Um, yeah, spoke to this already a little bit. Using plain language. Asking, you can just, if you don't want to do the whole prompt thing, you just ask a direct and simple question, see what it generates as an answer, and then modify, modify, modify until you get um, to what you need. Um, and I love to ask it for advice on how to make it better. It's like my favorite thing to do. 
<laughs> help. Um, okay, so in this phase of like now, I'm like thinking about prompts. I'm like, what? Uh, how is it gonna help me professionally, personally, <clears throat> tonically, creatively, romantically? Oh my god, scandalous. <laughs> um, obviously, these ones are the most obvious. We've all has you guys use these in professional settings? You guys use the yeah, not yet. Anyone not use these yet? I'm not. scared. You're too scared? Mm -hmm. You're too scared to make your life easier? All right, bro. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but the, it, is, it is extremely helpful. And even just inputting, having, <coughs> taking the time to write the message and then saying, like, you know, could you just show me what this would look like with, like, this tone um, helps me to think a little more about how I might reframe my syntax, you know, or, like, what adjectives are different if I'm, you know, for this audience, for this audience. Um, tell it you're doing a LinkedIn post if you're doing a LinkedIn post. Tell it you're doing an email if you're doing an email. Like, tell it what the context is that you're writing for. Um, Slack, here's, a, I'll tell you with Slack messages, um, and emails, like, there's sometimes when the, there's, like, us, there's, like, a brief moment of conflict that happens. We're humans. And so here I am having a very human experience, and something's annoying, and I want to be, like, shut up, but you can't. <laughs> Because you're at work, and so you <laughs> have to figure out a way to, to not say that, um, and it's helpful. Be like, how can I respond in a way that, yeah, um, and then kind of just seeing what it generates, like, okay, I didn't even think of that. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, Gemini is, uh, is, my, is my dad and, and my mom. So, as someone with no parents, I feel like it's really helping, <laughs> okay, <clears throat> um, <laughs> statements of work, obviously, it's helped me outline goals in new and exciting ways than ever before. Um, my statements of work are crushing these days. And really, it's about like seeing how it organized the information and going like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Let me apply that type of structure to the conversations I already had with the client. I have all the information. How do I lay it out in a way that like makes more sense, basically? Um... It's also done a really good job of rewriting risk sections um, for technical, like, I don't know a ton about, you know, certain risks, um, and so it'll be like, oh yeah, well, have you considered making sure your statement of work talks about to what extent you're going to hit your WCAGs? Um, flyers, event titles, and marketing copy. I'm going to talk about flyers for two seconds. I forget what time we end that for this session. The o'clock, thank you so much. Um, Image, I'm not touching on image generation too much in this. Um, I have asked it to do some stuff with image generation. It's interesting. Um, on my LinkedIn, there's a flyer that I made for a Super Bowl party that has some AI-generated images as a collage. And it's like interesting if you look at it, and I, I'll uh, throw it up later, but just like to guess which of the images were uh, AI generated and which came from like a, a library. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, and I'm, it, it can't really write whole flyers for me yet. Like if I put in all the information and tell it what I want, it comes out and it's just garbled garbage. So I don't, maybe that'll be something for the future, um, but we're not there yet. Um, okay. Personal life stuff, this, this is the big. This is the big question. Can can you go? To, not stop going. Don't stop going to therapy. Just could you do instead of doing it every week? Could you do like every other week? You know, and like implement some of these practices. Personality analyzer. Gnarly, like what? And scary, but effective. So what I did was I was like, can you analyze my personality? When it did, it sp it spewed out some like positive traits, some negative traits. And then I asked it to give me some ways to, to improve myself um, based on what my, uh, hold on one second. Because <laughs> it's out of order a little bit. Okay, so I was like, hey, analyze my personality and here's what it asked me to do. Answer all of these questions. And I was like, the more you tell me, you know, the more I can steal your secrets. Um, no, the more, <laughs> the more. But I was like, you know what? I'm really interested in um, pursuing this, and so I, so I did it. I answered the questions. Um, here's my answer. So I'm not gonna read it, but I really did the thing. Now, 
it was so impressed and i was like holy cow um basically that i love these like weird like pad the padding that it, the, it, the beginning and end padding is very funny to me i don't yeah um i think it's like well, this is what a human would say right um the interesting part here is like it breaks it into your traits and tendencies um, and then possible areas of focus. And this is where I got like super in interested in this. <laughs> Managing impulsiveness and how I had this was very funny. Um, it kind of tells it like tells you like, okay, so you perform a lot. Um, here's a possible area of, of focus. Maybe, you know, it's too much external validation. Here's some things to consider. And then from there, I kind of went through each of these and added, um, what are some like mantras that would be helpful for me based on my personality assessment. Um, so, and then I selected each area of growth and asked it like, what might be some things that I like think about? Um, and so I started this one, I just, I didn't put up all the examples, but uh, just the need for external validation I thought was really interesting. Um, and it gave me like these meditating, like, that's like pretty sick, like what? Uh, and so I actually like used these for a while. Um, uh, yeah, building confidence, celebrating progress, and I feel like if you're if you're a parent, if you're working with younger people, these are like things that you can pass on to them as well. Um, the personality analysis, I had, I did have a moment of like, is this too much information to give to AI? But ultimately, all I said was like, I'm a DJ and a comedian. And it was like, oh, you have mommy and daddy issues, so it's. <laughs> okay, I'm doing great. Um, okay, so, so it basically um, like going through the the analysis aspect of it, I found really interesting. Like the thing I was like, you know, I talked about how like I love my sisters and, and like, you know, kill and die for them. And they're like, oh, okay, you're like, you know, these things. And um, so it was, yeah, interesting exercise. I recommend giving it a shot. Um, yeah, and then going back, going back, going back. Okay, that was a big one. Um, there's other ways I've been leveraging it, but that's probably the best example to give. And then quickly in creative endeavors, um, for DJ Setlift Crafting, I'm DJing this um, 2010s dance next weekend at 10 forward. Just saying, you can come if you want. Um, you have to wear boots with the fur and apple bottom jeans. Um, and it actually did a great job. So I've been DJing for years, and this is like extremely, like, just like as like, I consider myself like I've done the 10,000 hours, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, that's like, you crushed it. Um, it tells you, you know, how to think about it and even gave me some really good song recommendations. Uh, so I thought that was cool. Um, and then analyzing songs I like to help me decide what types of songs to make. I threw some examples in the end of this, so I'll share it out as a resource, but um, I was having it look at, uh, let's just go there really quick because I don't want to run out of time show you the the progression of prompts mostly is the interesting part what makes a pop song with edm influence is hot <laughs> and then I, and then i was thinking about songs that there's like a couple songs when you're djing it is impossible to stop you just have to play it all the way through one of them is get busy by sean paul there's no dip so there's nowhere to mix out of another one is um uh what's a uh, man i feel like a woman if you start it, you have to play it all the way through. It's required by law. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of just going, like, me analyzing the theory and production methods. From there, I was like, because it was saying, like, it sounds clean and polished. And, like, well, what does that mean? And so I started asking about that. Um, and then I was like, can you analyze theoretically, like, what's going on in this song that I really like? And I'm in a band and we want to make that specific type of song. Um, and so it gave me that. And then with the clean and polished. So then I started to ask about EQ, like how do you optimize your EQ? So I just basically gradually getting more and more specific as the answers came out. Refining your prompt, that's key. Um, yeah, and then I started asking it to write me stuff, which I thought was really fun. Um, so it's like, can you write a love song, basically, was my first prompt. And then it just was trash. And I got really specific. I'm like, all right, a sophisticated, nuanced, and saucy <laughs> love song about yearning to hold someone's hand at 130 BPM, key of E flat major, describe the instrumental and the effects that it uses. 
And this is one where, when I did tell my wife about it, she was like, something's wrong with you. Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's so specific, and it was really cool to see. Um, and it, you know, so theoretically, I could make this song, and theoretically, it might be okay. It's awful, but it's good. What's that? It's awful, but it's good. Right, the, the lyrics are trash, but you, <laughs> know, but you know what? It gets the point. It's using the keywords. It would make a good rhyming dictionary, though. Right. <laughs> so taking it and like kind of, my, I would never use these lyrics. Yeah, that part is track. Um, okay. So kind of just as I went, getting better at writing the prompts. I thought I want to show you guys this one because I think it's it's so cute. So, um, that prompt we talked about before. Um, it's like, what tone do you suggest I use in crafting my response to my best bro that's not cringy? And it was like, we could do playful or we could do sincere. And then it gave me some options. And this is a picture from uh, from last night. I thought it was so cute. Uh, yeah, so it, it actually gave some ways that I could answer the question. Um, cool. We're like almost out of time. I want to talk about uh, the romantic stuff really quick. The best thing I did ever was I was like, all right, what should we talk about? Like, what are we proactively checking about? Because couples therapy is getting expensive. And all we seem to be doing is flushing out conflicts that already happened. So how do we proactively talk about the tough stuff? Um, and it started with this prompt and progressively we got more specific. It gave me this list. Children, religion, politics, finances, chores and housework, intimacy, social life, extended family, careers, ambition, personal space. Pretty good list. So what we did was we wrote this, sent to a notebook, wrote the list down. And every week we picked two. There's many more now. We've like, you know, modified the list to be more specific to us. Um, but we, just, we each picked two things from the list. We talked for, you know, 45 minutes and... Like still no kids, still no kids. All right, next. Um, you know, but it is like more. Some of it is more like, literally, like that's our time to talk about dishes and and anything that's come up from the week. And it's like really been helpful. Um, and then I asked it for a list of date ideas, uh, and then I kind of it gave me this very generic list, and I was like, some of these I really hate. So then I just got more specific. I'm like, I'm into this. I'm like a goofy goober. And she's like, you know, uh, kind of more at home type, but she does work these days. And then it broke it into like things you could do different days of the week. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, we'll go over each one. Um, I've also asked things like this. How would, would we debrief after an argument about blank? Um, and that includes for friends too, um, including like some pretty contentious political stuff. It won't touch anything that has to do with Palestine right now. It's just really interesting to have uh, an LLM go, yeah, I actually don't want to um, even risk having an opinion about that. Um, uh, yeah, it was really interesting to be like, oh, okay, and I asked every, every language model I could find, and they were just like, no, we don't, we're not going to talk about that one. Um, and then how to approach this topic with, and then the context for the relationship. All right. Uh, Let's give a couple more examples of prompts. Um, how do you respond warmly in a way that communicates care? And then I'm just using this as an example, but, and then inserting the message. Um, this has been really helpful to think about. I would, and, but you can tell that my issue is I didn't specify the format. So it like assumed I was writing an email, which is like, why are you emailing about this? <laughs> um, but specifying the format for next time, and it's really interesting. Best regards. It lo if you see somebody sign their email, best regards, you know for a fact AI wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard somebody say best regards before? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you've been using it, just know. So is AI, huh? Maybe uh, be like, looking forward to it. That's mine. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Um, all right, we talked about these. All right, so another conclusion. It's really about what you do with the information. So that, um, that seemed pretty obvious, um, but the big thing is just like getting really good about refining your prompts and then asking for follow-up prompts. Um, yeah, but you might get some cool songs out of it. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I thought this was really interesting, this one. I said, um, write a melodic line, including rhythm and notation in C sharp minor based on a pentatonic scale that's repetitive, nuanced, and sophisticated. Cool. And what is this? Okay. <laughs> 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 quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. <laughs> ah, that's just, that's really got me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, I was having a lot of fun with that, obviously. Um, but, yeah. Um, ultimately, AI is like, we need each other. Like, AI is not going to replace us. It's not going to replace real-life human relationships and connections. So, let's just figure out how to leverage it as a tool especially while it's still free, right? Um, we know the internet is basically an essential need at this point. Like, it's just, it's, you know, I mean, not to be dramatic, but it's like, you need it like you need AC, you know? Um, and if you live in the South, you need it like you need, or like, you, yeah, you need it like you need AC in the South and like you need heat up here. Like, you can't really live without it. You could try, but it'd be uncomfortable. Uh, I think that there's a world where these exist and we need them. And so, like, let's figure out how to use it. Um to make us better people. And don't don't dabble in deep fakes. That's scary. Um, cool. Uh any questions? Well, I probably have a question. I think we're over, but I would love to talk about this forever. Okay, cool. Thanks, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever tried to get it uh Gemini to generate a lead sheet, like you know, with lyrics and chords over it from any songs? It did this. C sharp, blah, 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 D sharp. Oh, that's pretty D darn sharp. good. Yeah. And and that was just cold? Oh, yeah, the prompt was, oh, well, write a saucy pop electronic dance song with rhythm influences at 98, key of C sharp, pentatonic ball, blind chorus, repetitive nuance, so this good. So I got... Oh, I meant, like, for an existing song, can it give you chords? Oh, great Like, question. make a chord sheet? Can it do... I was trying to get it to... Like, Mary Had a Little Lamb, can it give you the words and the chords over that? Mm -hmm. Um, it, the f furthest I got was KFC Sharp, it uh, gives you the chord progression, and then it tells you, like, where it modulates, like, but I couldn't get it to do it as, um, lines. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know, I really want to know. Maybe I can. Yeah. Um, let's say, I'm going to check this, but let's take any other, like, big picture questions. You guys think I'm psyched? Just kidding, but you're <laughs> So I, I'm just sort of piggybacking on yesterday, you had to talk about how AI has changed the hiring process. And one of the things that had, had occurred to me is, you know, giving interview feedback, for instance, is really time consuming. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, in the future where there may be cases for maybe having an AI model designed for a specific task, like giving interview feedback, could you see where, uh, what was the question? Oh God, I'm so sorry. I had a question there. <laughs> uh, I think it was, uh, I was also wondering in terms of like, so these types of models can also be done like locally as opposed to being owned by Google or owned by. Um, do you see, I don't know, maybe the, the way that we use these uh, changing based on, it, it, how much more, I guess, would you feel comfortable using something like this if you knew that the data wasn't going anywhere? If it were, if you could really pour your heart and soul out to it, and that wasn't ever gonna mm. lose up. It was only for you and it. Like me personally? Mm. Yeah. That's a good question. That seems freaky, right? There's like no way to like know for sure. But then I think about how much Google already knows about it. You know, it's kind of like, is that a sunk cost fallacy? I, th I think it will progress as people learn to trust it. Yeah. Whether they should or not, it's still, it's kind of like Google. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But just being I, that it's local, is you, yeah. you can control that it's not going anywhere. It's if you know only what a you're conversation doing, between yeah. you but, and it. But people don't yeah. realize that it's like, like, like well, we don't have AI in our house, sure. you know? So. Can you, can you, tr can you like feed it, it feed a local, local language model that's on your own machine that is not now, can you feed it like, 20 years in your journal entries and do a prompt and go, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some recurring times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how do you guarantee it never gets connected? Well, that's 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 control over. Yeah. We know that we get better. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Would I give it? Probably. Honestly. Probably <laughs> right. I would give it more information. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.